It's easy to fall into the trap of keeping your monthly HOA fees low instead of increasing them to sufficiently fund your reserves. It's all too common and highly devastating, both physically and financially. In this story, we follow an association that stumbled forward through two decades of decisions that took them from being 69% funded down to only 11% funded and left them with a major special assessment. Let's open the page to the first example today. And it's an association that will be an example of stumbling forward. For this association, it's a large master planned community. It's over 2000 homes. They also have some commercial lots there built in the 1980s. So it's a mature association, 40 some year range. It's age restricted. So that gives you a, a stereotype of the homeowners there. Um, they're not wage earners in general. They are uh, people who are retired. And so that gives them a little bit of uh, a bias on how they look at expenses. And especially in a time when in the last few years where inflation is eating away the, the buying power of money, you can imagine that this group of people is a little sensitive to that. Anyway, this place has significant recreational amenities. It's a great place for an active senior lifestyle. They've had us, they've hired us for multiple reserve states since 2003, $2.5 million approximately annual budget, and home values in the 800 plus thousand range. Now, as I go through these examples, I'm going to show actual, again, numbers. And I'm going to gradually show you a little bit more so you're not overwhelmed at any point in time. So first you can see what they've done through the years. Three years, four years here at the very beginning, they skipped, they were on track for a few years, a skip and another skip. Now, what am I talking about type? The type is the level of service, the type of reserve study. So notice that we started with no site visits for this big property. We, we went a few years without ever having visited the property. They had a prior professional reserve study. And we were able to update that with the quantities and the component list, but it wasn't until our one, two, three, four, fifth engagement that we ever stepped foot on the property. So a lot of no site visit engagements, finally a with site visit update. The DIYs are our do-it-yourself reserve study kit. It's a kit product that we used to sell a whole lot of. We don't do as much anymore, but it's an engagement where the client provides the component list and we just do the number crunching and craft the report afterwards based on that information. So again, a do-it-yourself reserve study kit where the client is doing the walk around or just updating the numbers, skip a few years, they hire us again for another with site visit update and then skip a few years. And in this case, they went from on-site association hired on-site management to, they went to a professional management company that provided an on-site manager. So a few changes here, that's kind of the trend in the history. And you may think, why are they doing so many no site visit updates? Well, that's a good question. I think they're a little cost sensitive, but as my mom would say, you can be penny wise, but pound foolish. This is a place with a two and a half million dollar budget. And they are, I think maybe making some foolish decisions about saving a hundred or two hundred dollars here or there, and that I see that with the, the do-it-yourself reserve study kit. Why, as a place this big and robust and complicated, trying to do it themselves? That's a lot of work, and their staff is generally busy doing other things at their property. Okay, now we watch. What has actually gone on at this association? Well, the first reserve say we saw that they were okay about 70% funded. You know now that that is a pretty good place to be. But then they started dropping. Either the prices were going up or their funding was going down or maybe a combination of the both. And then finally by 2010, they're down to 28% funded. And we gave them a good kick right there. Um, encouragement to get back on track. And then either they did get back on track or they were fudging their numbers, looking at them optimistically. And I'll let you look at that, a little more information in just a moment. Then we got back on site 2019, they're down to 37%. And by the time 2023 came around, they're down to 11% funded, which is uh, 
Basically, if you were a person, you'd be in the hospital, you'd be in the intensive care unit. Okay, a little more information. You've seen this. Now we've got some more information here. Recommended annual funding for reserves, 230000 288000 300000 600000 Boy, when we first came to this property, we learned a lot. And we learned that the funding is going to cost a whole lot more than they had been thinking. And then uh, they do a do-it-yourself reserve state kit for a few years, and the numbers end up being about the same. But by the time we're back on site, we have to step it up to 840000 let four years go by, four years of deterioration, four years of inflation, and we're up to recommending $1.3 million per year in reserve funding. Now, remember, a couple thousand homes, so a big place, but still, dollars per home, even if we round it up to $600 per year, you can think that that's not really all that much money. That's 50 bucks a month. 50 bucks a month for all the things they're getting common area-wise at this association. So our recommendation is not a lot of money. It's just over a dollar a day. Um, And then you look at the actual, uh, they were slow to follow our recommendation. And then I begin to wonder here if this was a fictional budget where you know, they budgeted for $630,000 with the reserve funding, but they were never quite making it. I kind of sense that by the way we found that their percent fund, it took a real dive. And I, I wonder what the response is going to be here in 2023. We haven't learned what they're doing. And one more step is that in addition to finding they were 11% funded, no surprise, we needed to recommend a $5.8 million special assessment to provide the funds for the deterioration that had occurred over all these years they just hadn't collected. So that's kind of what happens when you get down here and you're in the danger range in the danger range too long, you get hit with a special assessment. Okay. So a few things to learn. Our recommended funding had been in the twenty to twenty nine percent of total budget range. For those of you who've joined us on many webinars, you've heard me say many times, 15 to 40% is a pretty common range for where your reserve funding should be. And at the end there, their reserve funding dropped to the 10% range. And like I said, the expenses don't change. They're always happening. So if you're lowering your funding, all that means is you get hit with a special assessment. The costs are there. You've not prepared yourself, and then all of a sudden the homeowners have to catch up very quickly to you know maintain the pool, maintain the tennis courts, maintain the bocce ball courts, maintain everything, the multiple rec centers they here had. I think this place had a golf course also. All those things are expensive, and you can't ignore the real costs. So what do we learn? Basically, the do-it-yourself reserves day kit was probably not a good choice for a humongous master planned community and skimping reserve funding did not save any money because you need to pay that same amount of money in a special assessment. All you've done is shift who paid it instead of 2,000 or so homeowners paying it a little bit every month over the course of many years. All of a sudden, it's the 2023 set of homeowners who get hit with a, a real big special assessment. And that's pretty darn unfair. At Association Reserves, we make the present less stressful and the future more secure. If you want to join us in this mission, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Leave a comment down below on what you'd like to see us address in a future video. Let's plan for your best future.